So what's the pattern that we use to inject botulinum toxin? Is it a straight line across the forehead? Is it a V-shaped pattern? Is it an M-shaped pattern? I'm going to discuss that and uh, we can uh, see what would wo work best for each case. There is no conflict of interest related to this presentation, so I aim to illustrate the common patterns to obtain the desired brow shape and how to avoid the patient dissatisfaction due to adverse events like uh, a Mephisto sign or drooping of the eyebrows. So briefly, I'll discuss the relevant anatomy, the patterns and techniques for injection, and how to avoid and manage pitfalls. We all know that the frontalis muscle is a single muscle occupying the full forehead from temporal fusion line to temporal fusion line on each side. If we paralyze it completely, we're going to get brow toses. However, uh, Dr. Sebastian Kotofana described the C-line or the line of convergence where there's an upper part of the frontalis muscle which is a depressor of the hairline and a lower part which is an elevator of the eyebrows. So if we inject above the C-line, we're injecting the depressor part so we might even get brow elevation. The lower part occupies around 60% of the forehead. Regarding depressors, we have three main depressors the procerus muscle in blue, the corrugator supercilii, and the orbicularis oculi muscle. The medial fibers of the ocularis oculi muscles are known as the depressor supercilii, or described as the depressor supercilii by some workers. So what causes ptosis? When we inject the glabella, if we go too high, we get the lower fibers of the frontalis, we get brow ptosis. If we go low, we get this levator palpebris superioris, and we get eyelid ptosis. So too high, we drop the eyebrows, too low, we drop the eyelids. And of course, if you use a, a generic product with high diffusion, we would get uh, drooping of both the eyebrows and eyelids. So these are the common injection patterns. This is the transverse pattern, which I prefer in most cases, again, from temporal fusion line to temporal fusion line. And because I maintain the shape of the eyebrow and I don't get a weird looking eyebrow or lateral elevation or amphisto sign, the M-shaped pattern is commonly shown in uh, uh, many symposia. I'm not really sure why, but it uh, aims at cause, uh, resulting in an arched eyebrow because it, prefer, it preserves the lower uh, frontalis muscle in the mid-pupillary line. The V-shaped pattern is quite useful in patients who are vulnerable to brow ptosis. Those patients whom whatever we do or decrease the dose, they get brow ptosis. Using the V-shaped pattern helps avoid the ptosis and helps elevate the lateral eyebrows. The only drawback is that we might get some remaining lateral frontalis lines. And a double line or two lines in cases that are resistant to uh, botulinum toxin. This is the 21 point technique. I don't have time to go through that. I've published a geometric injection technique with my colleague, uh, Dr. Heba Darwish here, where uh, we take measurements. The point is that the injector's eye is not an exact measuring tool. So pitfalls could, relate, could be related to asymmetry. One brow, eyebrow different or, or than the other, or higher or lower than the other. So we take measurements from the uh, brow and from the midline. And let's say that we are getting here the full uh, brow. Let's say we want to elevate the lateral eyebrows. What happens is that we go with the injection points more medial. So we preserve the lateral frontalis, which compensates and lifts the lateral eyebrows, if we, need, if we want to do that. And we just take the measurements. How deep should we go? Dr. Davidovich have published this paper that she, we should touch the periosteum and feel a click. I really honestly don't do that because I feel that it could be painful and avoiding pain is what helped my practice grow and patients tell me that we come because you don't hurt us. So what do we do? I just create a fault with the skin, enter at a 30 degrees angle so I'm neither 
intradermal causing pain or I don't touch the periosteum causing pain, I just go subcutaneous like this. And uh, I think this is almost painless in most cases. Uh, regarding the glabella, this is again the revised points uh, described by Dr. Kotofana. He's avoiding the other higher points. He's avoiding the lower frontalis muscle because he prefers to uh, inject the procedures at the origin, the corrugators at their origin, and this should stop the frowning Sorry. movement completely. If, we, if the patient still frowns, we can add some additional points laterally at the lateral attachments of the corrugator. I'll show you now this, what we do. So these are the main points for the injection, the three points. This is a video of the same technique. So these are the main points deep on the bone in the procerus, at the origin of the procerus and the origin of the corrugator where the patient is frowning. We protect the orbit by placing a finger so that the, uh, the toxin doesn't diffuse towards the eyelid. And if the patient remains to frown, then we add 2.5 units of uh, onabotrium toxin or 12 point or uh, 7.5 uh, of abobotrium toxin at the attachments of the tail of the corrugator in the mid-brow or in the mid-pupillary line. Uh, this uh, video has been contributed by my colleague, uh, Dr. Dina Farouk, she's somewhere here. And we, the point is that we just get a very natural result here. And with deeper lines, we might need uh, filler we can treat very deep lines, but we need to be prepared with hyaluronic days in case we get a vascular event, which we did see, and it resolved with the half hourly injection technique with no uh, sequelae. And to elevate the eyebrows, we might uh, wish to add two additional points uh, at the lateral part of the nose to get the depressor supercilii and the, in the lateral uh, eyebrow to get the orbicularis oculi muscle, the superior lateral portion. How to manage pitfalls? Remaining lines could be treated by injecting one or two units at the, laterally at uh, those remaining lines. Uh, these remaining lines are orbicularis oculi muscle and we just inject one or two units that would correct them. <coughs> We're injecting the depressor supercilii muscle here to elevate the medial eyebrow. Uh, of course, the worst here would be lid toses with products of, of high diffusion. And uh, they're mainly managed with sympathomimetics. I've tried the pretarsal uh, butyrin tox injection once. It didn't work well for me, but it seems it worked I well for it. others. And this is my last slide. So to summarize, I measure for symmetry. As I've, I've shown you our publication regarding the geometric technique from temporal fusion line to temporal fusion line to get symmetrical relaxation of the frontalis muscle. We inject above the C line to avoid toses and we use the three point injection technique for the glabella. We add an additional two points if we need to at the tail of the corrugator. For any other questions or discussions, I would be delighted if you can contact me. At this, uh, these are my contacts. Thank you so much. Thank you, doctor. Next up, uh, we have uh, Dr. Profe uh, Professor Giuseppe Sito from Italy.